give our praise. You're worthy of our glory, all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. We just magnify him and we exalt him today for what he's done and what he's doing. I know he's doing great things for you. I know he's doing great things for you because he's doing great things for me. And I know that God doesn't have a respective person, meaning that he loves us all the same. And if he, based on his love for me and the love he has for you, I know he's doing great things for you. So we just want to thank God for his wonderfulness, his beauty, his love, his amazing grace, and his amazing mercy that is new every morning, every morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We'll go right into our sermon today. We are understanding love, what it is and what it's not. Part two. So I want you to grab your Bibles with me and I want you to turn to our base scripture, which is John 3 and 16. That's John 3 and 16. And after we read it, we'll pray, and then we'll go right into the Word of God together. Amen? Amen. John 3.16, reading out the New King James Version, it says, For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Father God, we thank you. We magnify you and we exhort you for all that you have done this far in this service. We thank you, God, that you have showed up and showed out so far. Lord, we thank you for your anointing, your power that is penetrating and moving through this room. We thank you, God, for being God in our lives. Lord, we ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you be with this part of the service just as you was with the parts prior. Thank you, Jesus. Bless each and every person, oh God, that was, that will hear this word. Move through your spirit. Move through your move through the anointing that you place inside of me. Father, I pray, dear God, as I decrease, you increase. I pray, dear God, that you will have your way. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, as his word go out, that no devourer, no devil, no demon will be able to stop, interrupt, come against, or snatch out this word from your people. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that this word, O oh God, would change the very perspective on how we see love. I'm asking, O oh God, for a mind change today. I'm asking, oh God, to look at it from a different angle. Have your way, God. And we give you glory. And we give you praise. And we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I grew up in the ministry, that scripture was the one of the only scriptures that I could remember that I could recall right from my mind. I didn't need the Bible, I didn't need anything. I just knew that scripture. And for a great part of my life, 316 was the time that God would wake me up in the morning. Every morning for years and years and years. I will always see the hour 316. I may fall back to sleep. Sometimes I may get back up. But I always see the, the, the hour 316. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I see 316 and I didn't understand. I knew what the scripture meant, but I didn't understand why God was showing it to me. And what God was trying to show me after all the years of trying to figure that out, I knew that he loved the world. But what he was trying to show me was that he loved me. See, sometimes we hear that God loves the world and we put it away from ourselves. We'll say that God loves everybody else, but we don't realize that we was included in that conversation. 
I didn't know that God was including me in that conversation. It didn't matter how many times it was said to me or how many times I heard it or even when I saw it. I didn't understand that God loved me. So I took the word world out of it and I made it personal. And I began to say that God so loved me that he given his only begotten son. So I was a little selfish at that moment because I had to understand that it's not just about everybody else because sometimes in our life we can look at things and think that everybody else is blessed or everybody else is loved or everybody else got this or everybody else got that, but it's not about me. But I come this morning to let you know that God so loved you that he given his only begotten son for you to not perish so that you can have everlasting God. What a wonderful feeling. It warmed my heart to understand that I was included in such a wonderful thing. That he did not discriminate. That he didn't look at me and knew that all of the sins that I was going to commit, all of the mess that I was going to get myself in, over the years, he still made the decision to send his son for me. He still made the sacrifice for you and I, regardless of what he knew we was going to do. How many understand that what you do in your life that God already know? God already know your shortcomings. God knows where you're going to fall. God already know where you're going to mess up at. God already know. He already knew that before he given his son for you. Talking about love in a great detail, in a great way. Can you imagine being in a relationship with somebody that you know is going to mess up on you? Can you imagine being in a relationship where you know someone's going to cheat on you? Where you know somebody's not going to do you right? Where you know that someone ain't going to spend time with you like you want? Where you know that they won't even worship you for the things that you do for them? And they won't even care about all of the things that you have done for them over the course of years. That they can only see the bad and they'll never see the good. And many times we find that we forget about the good of something, focusing on the bad. One mistake and it's over. But notice with God, you can make many mistakes and it's still not over with. He doesn't change his love for you. See, I heard someone said to me once that I fell out of love with God that it's impossible because he can't fall out of love with you. There is no such thing because if you fell out of love with me, that tells me you never loved me in the first place. You fell out of love with me or you, or you did not love me based on something that I did that you didn't like. Well, what if God, knowing the things that we don't, we, we, that he doesn't like, which is sin, he, not that he only don't like it, he hates it. But he loves you regardless of the sin that you do that he hates. Oh my God. Let's go and get into this this morning. I hope you got your thinking hats on because we're going to go deep in this. Let's go to the definition again. What is it that love means? As I said before, love is not something that was written in the script you know, many times for, us, for you ladies that Love Lifetime and love some of these romantic Santa Hallmark and some of these things that you see. Unfortunately, ladies, I hate to break your heart, but that's not love. That's man's ideal of what they think love is. And they created movies around this, scripts around this, scenes around this to show people feelings and not necessarily 
true love. True love is this. It means affection. Now I know what you're thinking. Affection, what, what many people say they don't get enough of. Affection is not a touch. Affection is not just limited to a man or a woman touching on you. Affection is bigger than that. The word affection is a fondness or a liking. I heard someone said to me, I counsel a young lady that said to me, I love him, but I don't like him. Impossible. You may not like what he did or what he's doing, but if you truly love him, you have to like him. See, God likes us. He liked us and loved us so much that he gave his son, but he also liked and loved us so much that he created us in his own image to be a reflection of him on this earth like he is in heaven. See, don't get this thing where you're not liked because God likes you and loves you. You can't have love and remove like. Like is part of loving. So when you say you need an affection, you just want some people in the world, they just want that feeling of being loved. But what good is it feeling like someone loves you but not really knowing that they do? See, feelings I found go up and up and down. Feelings is based on the circumstance. Whatever the situation is can change the feeling in the moment. If I hug you and then pinch you at the same time, I would change how you feel about that hug. <laughs> but you have to understand that it's more, it's more than just a feeling. Many of us have made the mistake of falling in love with the feeling. The feeling of how it felt when he gave you a flower. The feeling of how, she, how it felt when she told you you were handsome. The feeling you got when they told you how good you smell. If they did not, if they tell you the opposite of that, how would the feeling be then? See, love cannot be based on a feeling alone. It's got to be based on God alone. Follow me. Another meaning for love is gracious. You got to understand that God loves you, that he applies grace to us. His grace meaning simply that God is, 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 is not, is, how can I put it? It's is, is the way of God saying to us that I'm, I'm going to not penalize you for every little thing that you do. I'm not going to get mad at you because you make a mistake. I'm not going to throw you away because you didn't do what I wanted you to do. See, love is grace. He loves you, so it's hard for him to constantly punish you or to constantly come against you. God doesn't do that because of his grace for us. His mercy sticks out and it is new every single day. He, uh, he calls it to be new every single day because guess what? He knows that this day you're going to need it again. And none of us could be here without his grace, without his mercy. Because the Bible said that we all fell short. 
We all blew it once in a time. And what I have learned that through the love of God in my heart that I stopped being upset and judging people who blew it in my life. Who wasn't what I thought they ought to be. Or didn't do what I wanted them to do. And it's simple because guess what? If I'm going to walk and live in love and walk like my father who is nothing but love, I have to be less like me and more like him. So as he is forgiving, I must learn the art, it's an art of forgiving. I must learn to extend grace to someone who blow it, who make a mistake, who don't do it the way that I think it ought to be done. Love is bigger than what you think. It also said that love is a goodwill and high esteem for someone. See, God has a high view of you. He doesn't look at where you are. He looks at where you're going. See, he sees you in all facets of your life. He sees the beginning, the middle, and the end. He sees every part of your life. And we find this with Joseph, who he, who, who, the one with many colors, God had given him a dream of who he was. And through that dream, you got to understand God saw him high. See, God looked at us in a higher realm than some of us even look at ourselves. Many times we ought be looking down at people when we ought to be looking at looking up. Helping people come go up to their highest potential in life. See, God desire to pull you to your highest state, your winning state, to the greatest you possible. And just as God does that for us, because of his love for you, he wants the best for you. To be like him, we shouldn't want the best for others. Love is not just about us. It's not selfish. It cannot be just about me. Love is for everyone. And we have to learn to display it to everybody. Like Christ displayed it to everybody for us. Amen? Amen. Another, it says it is concerned, definition of love, is concerned for the welfare of another. See, God is concerned about you. He's so concerned about you, that's why he interrupts the plans that was set on your life. He interrupts your world because of his concern for you. He don't interrupt your world to, to mess you up. He, 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 he interrupt your world to set you up. To set you up to win. To pull you off the wrong road so that you can walk in the right. To interrupt your plans, to interrupt your dreams, to interrupt the things that you think is right. To move you from fake love so that you can experience real. See, we have to understand that God is not, don't want you not to experience love, to not to, to get you to a place where you don't uh, get any love at all, but God wants you to experience what love really is. And many of us have admitted or spoken and said that I have been in love, but I'm in love. But I dare to say that we don't even know what it is. If, we, if this love does not come with these components, if it doesn't come with these ingredients, you would just in feelings. Some people just in lust. When I asked a young man that was 
I was counseling with, what makes him so in love with this young woman? He started to tell me about her body parts. And he started talking about all of the things that she had and where she was born and different things that they, but he never said anything to me about her. He just talked about the things that was part of her, but not who she was as an individual. See, God loves you without anything. It's not based on your conditions. It's not based on who, what you have. It's based on who you are to him. And when you truly love someone, it's based on who, they, who you are, who that person is. I hear many people, and, 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 I, and I believe this, and, 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 I, and I don't get, I'm gonna get in trouble with this one. But I think the church just did the women of the of the world of, of the church wrong. And the reason I say that is because they told you to to, to never don't don't deal with a man unless he got all of these other pieces. Unless he got good credit, or he got certain amount of money, or he got this, or he this tall, or he this, and he, they're giving you conditions. But you should look for a man that has the love of the Lord in his heart. Because if he loved the Lord truly, then all of those things that you're asking for can be given to him at any moment by God. We blow it. And some of us is 40, 50, 60. I know 70-year-old women that say they still wait on the Lord for them to be married. And when I ask them why do they think they're not married, they give me a long list of what they're looking for in a man. But what if the man that God has for you don't have all of those conditions? So you put God on hold to give you what he want to give you because of what you want. And we have to understand that if when you want something greater than what God wants, he's not going to overcome your will and give it to you. He'll wait till you submit your will to his. And then he'll hand it to you. Oh my God. Amen. Love is bigger than a bank account. Amen. Love is bigger than a, 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 a credit report. Love is bigger than these tangible things that can actually, can easily be changed. With the right information and the right knowledge, a man can change his credit. With, my, with the right condition and the right knowledge, a man can change his financial st uh, stability. But a man that don't have the Lord cannot love you properly. We miss the main ingredient by looking at all the tangible things. He have to be so high. He have to look so way. She have to be so small. All these things means nothing. Because what if God said, all of us got to be Jews for me to love you? All of you don't qualify. None of you look the way you, I want you to look. None of you sound the way I want you. None of you got the things that I want you to have. So guess what? I won't love you. What type of God would that be? Notice now, the Lord that, that loves you accepted you in the worst state of your life when you was a sinner in mess. And here are you saying, that whoever got to come in your life got to be perfect. They can't have any shortcomings. You, my dear, you, my son, have no idea what love really is. You're missing the whole point. I remember being in a relationship with a young woman, woman. And I remember telling this woman that if she loves me, she would do certain things. And if she did not love me, she would not do it. But as I grew and got older, I understood that when you truly love somebody, it's not about what you can make them do for you, it is what you can do for them. See, the reason why we're not, 
where we are to be with God is because we're still at that point of asking God, uh, trying to figure out what God can do for us. We testify about how much God did for us, which is not a, not a bad thing. But I don't want to get to the next level and talk to somebody that will testify what tell me what they did for God. What they did for him. What sacrifices you have made for him. See, we got to grow up. We can't be on milk forever. We got to eat some meat. We got to get to a point where we realize that guess what? It's more than just what I want. It's about what God wants as well. When you love somebody, it's more than that. See, I realize that it's not about me getting pleasure as much of giving pleasure. See, to truly love is to give. And if I truly love you and I'm giving you my all, and you on the other end truly love me and you're giving me your all, no, neither one of us is going to lack. Only time one lacks is when one gets selfish and stop giving and only receive. Have we became selfish for God? To God? Have we became to the point where we only want to receive from God? But what are you willing to do for the God that you say that you serve? Would you stop doing certain things? When you stop doing things that upset him? When you stop doing things that will frustrate him? When you stop doing things that will hurt his heart? Do you want to know how to hurt God? It's simple. By simply being disconnected from him. Because his desire is for you to always be connected with him. His desire is for you to live eternity with you. Here's a man that want to live with you now into eternity. You ever had somebody tell you they love you forever? Well, God meant it. He loves you forever. For eternity. Forever and ever and ever. There is no ending of his love for you. This To hurt him is to leave him. Have you ever been left? How that made you feel when that individual left you? Not a good feeling. So it also bothered our God when we leave him. Where he wanted to stay connected to you forever. Let me, let me tell you the worst way for someone to leave someone. The worst way is that if you found out that they left you for somebody else, that really hurt. Because it's starting to make you think that the one that they left you for is better than they, than you. Doesn't it not? But look at this situation. We leave God for things that we think is better. We disconnect from our God for things that we think is greater than our God. I hate to be the one to say this to you. Well, I don't hate it. It's figure of speech. But there is no better man. There is no better God. That is top notch, the best one, period. You get no better. You can't get no better. You ever been with somebody that told you you'll never get anybody better than me? Listen to me. You'll never get anybody better than God. There's nothing you can do that is gonna, that's going to make you feel like God can make you feel. There is no one that can hold you like God can hold you. Some of them want to compare people to God. It ain't, it's not even, it's no match. No match. My prayer, your prayer should be, God, love me through this individual. So I can experience all of you. And to find someone with the love of God in their heart that can love you the way God desired you to be loved. Oh, come on, somebody. 
Let's go a little deeper. Look at that 1 John 4.12. 1 John 4.12. Not John, but 1 John 4.12. Glory be to God. 1 John 4 and 12 says this. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love has been perfected in us. See, we got to get to a place where the love of God is perfected in us. To be perfected in us, we have to think like he thinks. So there shouldn't be anybody that you can bring to the top of your head that you don't like or that you don't love. Because there's nobody that the Lord don't like or don't love. So we have to be perfected in this. To be perfect in love means to not hold anybody hostage for what they did or how they act. I heard, a, I saw a little meme that says that you love the person, wait a minute, wait a minute. It says forgive a person, but don't let them back in your circle. See, you have to understand, I'm not telling you to be unwise, but I am telling you how love look. What if God forgave us, but don't let you back into the kingdom? Or won't let you back into his circle? Or keep you apart, keep you distance away from me? And say, I'm going to love you from afar. I'm going to feed you with a lone spoon. We got to go past that mentality and realize and trust the fact that even if I let you in my circle I serve a God that will protect you from reverting me again mm -hmm. we have to go past the mindset and stop limiting our God to little things and understanding what love truly truly really is it says by this 13 we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. We know, we know, we're confident in the fact by the love of God being perfected in his spirit in us that we are his. You have to check, are you really God? Because if you're hating on someone you want to check that attitude. You want to check that motive. Why are you hating on them? See, there's people that I didn't like because somebody else didn't like them. And I like the person that didn't like that person. Silly. What if God had his click? Where he said, I only care about this group. And we're going to hate on that group. God that he's not like man. That he said regardless of any of the groups, I love every group the same. See, we should wish no harm on anyone. We should, we should want anybody to suffer. We should want anybody to go through something that we ourselves wouldn't want to go through. And if there is a way of helping somebody get out of it, we should be the first people that pull, that reach out in our hands to lift them up. Because you can't forget that at one time, you were the one that somebody had to lift their hand out to get you up. Through the power of God. Through the love of God. See, to be used by God effectively, to be used by God the right way, we have to have love in our hearts. We can't be like this world who discriminate because of a color of someone's skin. Because the gender of somebody's sex. Because the height of somebody, or the, or the weight of somebody, or the decision that somebody made. We gotta love them in spite of. And when are you, when are we gonna understand that they don't serve our God because through our reputation of God, that God is mean and nasty. They are my 
mindset is that God is hateful because we're hateful. They think our God is, is judgmental because we're judgmental. They think our God don't want them because we don't want them. They don't want to come in the presence of God because we won't let them in the church. We ourselves are stopping people from serving our God because we refuse to show love. Just because they don't smell like we smell or look like we look or dress like we dress. That's why I don't like, that's why I wouldn't even put on a suit. Because I want people to understand that it ain't got nothing to do with a suit. It ain't got nothing to do with how you look. Come as you are. You can't keep people out of the presence of God because of, they're not dressed the way you think they ought to dress. What if God had the same attitude towards you? I'm not going to save you because you don't look saveable. <laughs> what if he had that attitude? But thank God that he didn't and that he don't. It says, 14, and we have seen and testified the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confessed that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And he have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. If you're not feeling or experiencing the love of God in your, in your spirit, it's because you might be absence of love. If the love is absence, God is not going to walk into a hateful situation. But you have to understand, if you want God inside of you, you're going to have to become loving. You got to put down the judgments. You got to put down the, the finger pointing. You got to put down the, the way that you see things, the things that you don't like. I think it's funny. Ha ha funny that people forget where they came from. And they quickly to judge others that coming from the same place that they came from. It's funny because guess what? You was just like that before you changed. Now God didn't send you back around them to judge, for you to judge them. He sent you back around them to show them that they can get out of the very thing that you was in. You don't want to go there and look higher. You don't want to go there and feel that you're superior. You don't want to go there with, this, with a servant heart to help them come to the other side just like you did. This is what love is. Love is not being judged. Being, uh, being judgmental, I'm sorry. 17. Love has been perfect among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, we are in this world. We've got to be more and more like Christ in this world. It's not enough light shining. It's not enough salt being, salt being shown. It's not enough being displayed. I hate to be one to break the bad news again, figure of speech. Break the bad news to you. But do you not understand that Christians are almost a swear word now to some people? We have gotten to a place where people don't even trust a Christian no more. Where some of the young folks just threw Christians away. It got it so bad that it was that I had a conversation with the Lord and said, Lord, I don't know I want to even go on that title anymore. Because that title is cliche, it's, 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 it's dogged out. People have beat that thing down in the dirt because of us. Because of our display of God's love. These men said just as he was, I mean he was, we are. 
We have to learn to be more like him. How many people, how many, where did we read in the Bible that God turned people away? Where did we read in the Bible that God hated anyone? Where did we read in the Bible where God said, I can't stand none of them? Or they're not allowed to be in my circle? Where did we get this from? Where did the vision came from? What happened to a bunch of people loving Christ so much that we want to be everything like him? See, to me, a son will want to be like his father, especially if he's a good father. A daughter will want to be like her father, because especially if he's a good father. Now, I get it. We, we, we don't have good fathers sometimes in this world. But I, not having the perfect father, learned that there were a perfect father, and I want to be just like him. Come on, somebody. So let's look at this a little deeper. It says, there is, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not, has not, has not, has not been made perfect in love. If you're operating in fear, it's because you don't understand what love is really is. If you're scared, it's because you don't know what love really is. If you're nervous and you're worried, you don't know what love really is. Because if I truly love you, that means I got you. See, God loves us letting you know that I got you. I know, I know it doesn't look like it sometimes. Because there's many times in my life that I went through something, I didn't think God had me. But then when I look back at it, he had me. He was right there all the time. In some of my darkest hours, some of my worst moments, he was always there. The reason why you don't think he's there is because you have not yet recognized the love of God. If you recognize the love of God, you will see that God has always been on your side. He always stood next to you. He always loved on you. Love is not giving up on you in your worst moments. Love is not pulling away when things are going bad in your life. Love is not turning your back, turning your back on you when you need it the most. Love is right there in the middle going right through it, right along with you. Remember when the Hebrew bros boys got thrown into the fire? And the Bible, and the Bible says that the, the king thought that there was, uh, uh, he, he threw three in, but he see four. The fourth one was the son of God. Even the king said, he said the fourth one looked like the son of God. Because even in the worst state of their lives, right at the, right at the point where they could have lost their lives, God showed up and he was standing right there. People look at me all the time and they say, you couldn't be as bad as you said you were. They used to, they look at me and say, no way, no way, no way. But just like the Hebrew boy that did not smell like smoke, or was not singed, or was not dirty at all when they came out of the fiery furnace, because of God was there, that's the reason why you can't see it. Because God was there. God went with you through your dirt and through your hurt, through your worst time and it doesn't even show because he covers you and he protects you and that's love, saints. That's love. Glory be to God. It says we love him. 19, my favorite verse. We love him because he first loved us. You know, you've been in relationships where you try to figure out which one of you going to say I love you first. <laughs> well, God already told you. Hey, I, I, I'll, I'll let you know. I love you first. <laughs> I love you before you even love me. Can you imagine? Being with someone that loves you before when you don't even love them back. 
Been there. Been in that relationship. Not good. Not a comfortable one. But God said, I will take the chance on you. And I'm going to show you love. And I'm going to give you my love in spite of what you give back to me. I know you don't love me. But I'm going to love you enough. Trusting and hoping and believing that soon that you'll turn and start to love me back. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Find 1 Corinthians 13. I mean, I still in the New King James Version. A little bit longer than I'm going to let you go. So you have to understand where God has taken us. To a new place. To a new dimension. To a new level. Where we don't think like we did at this level here. You are gone from a babe unto a mature adult. A mature saint in God. You have gone from the stages of just desiring milk. I can stand here all day long and preach to you about how much money God going to give you, how blessed you are, who God wants everybody to be a millionaire. And I can I can tell you all of that stuff. But what good of it for me to tell you that you can gain the whole world and you end up losing your soul? It would make it would mess you up. What good would it do? None. Then I have to stand before God and give account to the Lord why I taught you about money instead of about him. Because guess what? If you got him, you got the money. If you got him, you got the promotion. If you get him, you got the love. If you get him, you got everything that you need. If you just get him, quit trying to come through the window when there's a door. Come on, somebody. Quit trying to come through the go through a, a, a chimney when there's a door. The door is Christ. You can't go past the door. Quit trying to go around it. There's no other way. We have to do it the right way. Who got my scripture? Thirteen one, First Corinthians thirteen one. It says, "Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but if I have not love, I have become sounding brass or clinging cymbals." In other words, we have to understand. We get into this. We get into this big debate of who's speaking tongues and who don't, and who's, who's if you're not speaking the tongue, you're not a man of God. No, we missed the whole point there. The point is. What he's saying is, if, whether I do it or not, if I don't have love, I'm nothing. We focusing on the wrong point. We need to be trying to get the love of the Lord and then have the Spirit, the Spirit to speak through us. That's just great that you have tongues, but my question is, do you have love? Do you not know that you can be full of hate in speaking tongues too? The purpose is, is to have love and then you got everything. Let's look at this. And though I have a gift of prophecy, I can prophesy to, to hundreds. My last conference that I did a couple years back, I prophesied to probably 110 people per night. And I did it for like two or three nights. I can prophesy forever. But if I don't have love for that person that I prophesied to, I'm wasting my time. If I don't realize that God loved that person that I'm talking to, this is why sometimes you have to listen to some prophets and they're so harsh and they're so, they so nasty. And even if they prophesy to you something about money, they, they, it's, it's horrible. Whatever they say, love, anything if they coming out of their mouth is just... And because even though they prophesy, they don't have love. See, when you prophesy, you have love. Because I'm not just trying to tell you what God is saying. I'm telling you it from his heart. Even if I'm correcting you, I'm correcting you from his heart. So it shouldn't come off in a way where I'm beating you up or making you feel bad or embarrassing you. Learn how to prophesy if you're going to prophesy. Do it in love. 
He said, even if I understand all mysteries and knowledge and thoughts, even if I have faith so that I can move mountains, but not love, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods, feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. You got to understand, we're missing the key ingredient. It's love. I got to a point, or well, I'm getting to a point. I'm asking God to help me. Why well, don't you want to hear garbage about another person? Though. If we can't talk about praying for this person and how we can duck this person, don't call me. Don't call me. I'm putting it on camera. Don't call me. If you ain't calling me, telling me, hey, I need you to touch you and agree with me because this individual is going through and we need to help them change, don't even call. Don't send me a text. Because we got to get to a point in life where we showing love in everything. Nobody deserves hate. Just like God doesn't hate anyone. We have to learn to speak for people and not against people. Maybe it, it would take us just prophesying something wonderful in the atmosphere that can change the whole atmosphere around that individual. But it got to be done in love, not in hate. This is not me against the world or you against everybody. It's us trying to help the world. God never turned his back on the world. He came to save the world. What are we doing? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Is save the world? Is to help them come back to God, not to your church, to God. We're so interested in people coming to our church that we forgot about them coming to God. Why? What are we looking for? What's the motive behind it? Could they have something to do with tithes? Yeah, I said it. Let's go. We have to learn. Jump down to eight for me. Love never fails, but rather there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect had come, then that which is in part will be done away. 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. And I thought as a child. You're not children anymore. We can't think like children anymore. We can't speak like children anymore. We can't act like children anymore. We have to learn to be people of God. We have to learn to be saints and mature in God. When we stop going after the wrong stuff, are we, are, we, are we helping someone truly change their life? How many people that sit in the back of the church that is losing, that is falling out? Some people made it to church but not sure how they're going to make it home. Some people want to go home to an abusive spouse. Somebody considering divorce. Somebody is hungry. Didn't have nothing to eat this morning and won't have nothing to eat this afternoon. Where's the love from the church? What are we getting the money for? To build a bigger church? When the saints are falling apart? No. If we're going to build up any church, build this church. Because the Bible says that we are the church. How am I taking a building fund for somebody? Not a building fund for ourselves only. To look to, to make ourselves look greater and bigger because we're on a bigger stage. And I don't even want to get into these stages because what happened to the altar? What happened to a church looking like a church, not an arena? Let me stop. It says, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but face to face. Now 
I know in parts, but then I should know as I also am known. In other words, his understanding, our understanding are limited to the way that is limited to the way we think. See, if we think in a in a young in a young mindset, our perception is off on how we see things. We want to ride like the people of the world. We want to act like the people. We want to do the things that they do. And we don't understand. That's not showing no one what love really is. See, we got to be opposite. They need to look at you and say, how can you love this person when they full of hate? Because God loved me and I was full of hate. How could you forgive that person for what they did? Because God forgave me for what I did. How could you do all of the things that you're doing? Because all of those things was done to me for me. So we got to go back to it. And we need, we need to remember where we was at before we got here. We so quick to point fingers out there at other people, but we need to start pointing fingers at ourselves. May I say this, that you still haven't arrived? I still haven't arrived? We still got shortcomings? But what if we all grab hands and help each other get through it together? Maybe that's what it's all about. Maybe that is what God is waiting on. For us to connect with one another, love on one another, and fellowship with one another, and help each other get past where we are. Saints, that's what love is. Glory be to God. Come on, stand with me. 13 says, and now abide faith, hope, Love, but in all of these, the greatest one is love. There is a part three to this. <laughs> we have to understand that love is what God needs us to walk in, to live in, to walk, talk in. Love should exude out of you like odor. It should be so, see, people should be able to come around you and sense and just feel the love of God. When I first got saved and I was on fire for the Lord, telling everybody about the Lord, people would come, I mean, I'm talking to strangers would come around me and they would fall out to sleep and they'd just be at peace. And when they finally wake up, and it's crazy because I'm sitting in a stranger house and everybody's sleeping like, what in the world? And some, when they finally wake up and they say, it just, it's, it's just the peace of God that's around you. I, I, can't, I, I can't stay awake. I just feel so much compassion and love and I just, I'm, just, I'm just at so much peace. They need to feel the love of God around you when you come around. They need to feel him so much that they want it for him themselves. We are the example for this earth to see it what our God is really about. And many times, many of us, including myself, have not been a great example. But we're going to change it. We're going to turn it around. Because guess what? If we do it the way that God designed it to be done, we will see the hand of the Lord on this earth like never ever before. All you that keep talking about revivals, I want to see the revival come and revival God. Revival. Let me tell you something. It don't happen until you start loving. It doesn't happen until you start showing love. I'm not trying to get a bunch of people excited so they can go back and be the same. I'm trying to get a bunch of people to get excited and change their life for the Lord and that they can show the love of God in their hearts to everybody else. That's what love is all about. Amen. Come on, pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne, we magnify you, we exalt you, we love you. For Father God, you are worthy of all the praise, glory, and all the honor. Lord God, help us. Help us to walk out this love that we speak on. Lord, we need to love people the way that you love them. 
We need to show people the love of you in everything that we're in and everything that we do. Lord, we repent for not showing love. We repent for the church not showing love. We repent for our, for our family members and our cousins and brothers and everybody, God, our friends that have not shown love. And Lord, help us to display your love for everybody. Help us to show them what you all about so that they won't misinterpret you any longer. That they won't think, dear God, that you are a hard God, that you are a mean God, that you're a nasty God, that you're a judgmental God, but that you are a loving God. Father, help us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. And Lord, I speak to every person. Dear God, that will hear this, that will see this, that has been part of this, that God, our hearts, would change to be better than we were yesterday even if it's one step at a time we magnify you and we exalt you we give you glory and honor Father for those that don't know you and those that have been disconnected from you that have not even that cannot experience the love of you we pray God that they come back to you we call out to the backslider. We call out to the sinner. And we ask them, God, to accept you in their hearts. That they pray. That they will confess their sins and ask you in their heart. And dear God, that they will rebuke the devil that has been robbing them of their, of their future. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank <laughs> you.